Hello and welcome to a Tuts Plus Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham, and in this video I'm going to talk about the difference between vector and raster files when it comes to digital graphics. You've surely heard these terms before, and you've probably worked with them as well. But you may wonder which format you should use when. And even if you're an old hand with vectors and rasters, you still may be at a loss to explain the difference to other people. So I hope this will clear some things up for users of all levels. So let's get started. A raster image is made up of square pixels arranged in a grid. All digital photographs, for example, are pixel-based raster images. So here I have a photo open in Photoshop, and when I zoom in, you can start to see the individual pixels that make up the image. A vector image, on the other hand, is made up of mathematically described objects, such as points, paths, strokes, and fills. Here I have a vector illustration open in Adobe Illustrator, and I can move or alter these objects individually. I can adjust the paths by manipulating the individual points to change the shape of the objects. Vectors have an underlying structure that is made up of these paths and shapes that can be filled or stroked with different colors, gradients, and patterns. So even if I alter the appearance of the object by changing its fill color, or its stroke color, or changing it to a pattern, that underlying structure remains the same. Here's a demonstration that explains the difference in a very basic way. Let's say you want to draw a simple curved line. For a raster image to describe that curve, it would have to use individual pixels, which again are arranged in a grid. A vector, on the other hand, tells the computer to place one point at the beginning of the line, another at the end, then draw the curve between them. The shape and direction of the curved line is described mathematically. So you can see that with something like this, the vector is the most efficient solution. It's kind of like giving someone directions to your house. You don't say, take a step, then take another step, then take another step, then take another step, and so on. You say, start here, walk to the end of the street, and make a right turn. Because vectors are mathematically described, they are resolution independent. This means they don't rely on DPI, or dots per inch, for their quality. A raster image has to have a certain pixel resolution in order to look good. Here's what I mean. I have a logo open in Illustrator. We're viewing it at 100% magnification, and it's a vector file, as you can see by the paths. Now even if I zoom in to over 500%, you can see that the edges are smooth and crisp. I'll zoom in again to almost 1600%, and again, nice, smooth, sharp edges. Now I want to pause here and mention something that can be a little hard to grasp. We are, of course, viewing this graphic on a computer screen, and computer screens are made up of pixels. So it can be confusing to think of a non-pixel-based, resolution-independent vector graphic that's being displayed on a screen of pixels. But if you print this vector, whether on a postage stamp or on a billboard, it will still look sharp. Here's that same logo as a raster file in Photoshop. We're viewing it at 100%, but even if I enlarge it to 200%, it starts to look fuzzy. And it looks even worse at higher magnifications because the resolution of the raster is simply not high enough. Computer fonts are another kind of vector file. They too have mathematical information in them so they can look sharp at any size. You can of course use type in Photoshop, and this is one of the areas in which vectors are used inside of that application. First, let's look at Illustrator. Here I have some live type, and I can select it with my type tool and change the point size, for example. And when I zoom in on it, it's nice and sharp. Here's that same logo in Photoshop. The type is also live, and I'm going to select it and change its point size as well. In the Layers panel, as long as you see this T icon, that means this is Live Vector Type. If I go over to the Layers menu, I can choose to rasterize the type. So now that turns it into pixels, and you can see the transparent icon in the Layers panel. And when I zoom in, you can see the pixels, and at a magnification higher than 100%, it just doesn't look very good. So by rasterizing the type, Photoshop has done away with the vector information and turned it into pixels. 
So when are you most likely to use these two kinds of images? The following is not a comprehensive list, and of course there are always exceptions, but in general, you would use a raster image for continuous tone photos, as we saw before, or textured backgrounds that have a wide tonal range, or digital paintings that have been produced with a graphics tablet and a program like Corel Painter or Adobe Photoshop. Vectors are generally better for images that have flat color and hard edges, such as logos, business cards and other designs that have a lot of typography, and screen printing, because with the screen printing process, you can't get a continuous tone. Common file formats for rasters are PSD, or Photoshop, TIFF, and JPEG. On the vector side, the common file formats are AI, that is the native illustrator format, EPS, which stands for Encapsulated Postscript, and SVG, or Scalable Vector Graphics. Now, of course, people create incredibly realistic vector illustrations using gradients, blends, and gradient mesh, and there are some people who insist on using Photoshop to design business cards. So there's definitely some overlap. But in general, there are big differences, and there are different uses for each format. To review, raster files are made up of pixels arranged in a grid. Vectors are mathematically described objects. Rasters have a specific resolution, which affects the quality of the image. Vectors are resolution independent, meaning they look good at any size. And generally, raster images have a larger file size than vectors. Well, I hope this has helped you understand these two essential file formats. See you next time.